Okay, that is our presentation. Now it's time to answer your questions. The uh, first question I see was just someone looks like they were having some trouble with their audio. So uh, you can always, this as, as always, this is a recorded program. So if uh, you go on, you should be able to hopefully hear the audio if you didn't get that fixed from the recorded version that will post up on the channel. So does the business need to be registered with the Secretary of State prior to submitting the application? If you are a corporation or an LLC, yes. It does have to be finalized and registered with the Secretary of State first. Um, when you submit your application, you will include your registration number um, on the first page of your application. So yes, it needs to be uh, registered prior to submitting your application. How do we document both journeyman four per four person experience? Uh, everything will be on your certification of work experience. So uh, it doesn't have to be documented separately if you had experience as a four person and separately for a journey person. Uh, you just need to be of that uh, caliber of work. So uh, it can all be on one certification of work experience listing any of the work that you performed at any of those levels. So journey person or four person. The section four need to be filled out if I am a sole owner and only qualifier, should I NA in place there? So only page one needs to be completed if you are a sole owner. Um, section four, which is page two, would be if you have additional personnel. If I have done many trades over the last six years, or is that eight years, yep. uh, consistently, but only certain certifiers witness them, would I add the overlapping experience multiple times and have each certifier sign individually? Does more certifiers equate to a stronger application packet? Uh, so the time frame is always just going to be the time frame, whether different people saw you or whether you were performing it at different locations. Now, each of your certifiers can only attest to the time frame and the trades that they saw you perform. So as an example, if you worked with two different people that uh, witnessed your work in 2021, you would only need one of them to actually provide a certification of work experience uh, because you won't get credit for two people verifying the same time period. So uh, overlapping doesn't add to your experience. You can submit uh, both of them if you want, but you can only get one year's of experience for one year of work, even if multiple people certify it. So does drafting design creating plans count towards experience? Uh, no, that doesn't fall into, uh, I mean, if, if you then perform the work for those, those drafting and designs, then that would apply to perhaps a classification, but we, we don't have a classification for drafting and design. What are the requirements for the B2 license? So the B2, once again, is uh, residential remodeling. So we're looking for four years or 48 months worth of experience doing multiple trades. So as an example, uh, if you're a house remodeler and you go into houses and you do painting and drywall and some flooring, that's three trades that you performed during that house remodel. That's what they're looking for. So they're looking for your experience of 48 months doing at least three different trades. And once again, the B2 does not require that you're doing structural building. That's why it was designed that way. So three trades of non-structural uh, uh, building projects. Does an AA or BA without construction business experience still apply to experience? It could. However, we would have to see the official transcripts and evaluate it 
um, with the experience that you've submitted. So um, if the degree is not something that's directly construction related, we could possibly look at the classes. However, we would have to see those first. Uh, I am a firefighter. I've been working with pumps for the past four years and want to run a surface cleaning business. Will my experience with pumps be acceptable? Uh, once again, we can't really predetermine uh, that experience. Uh, also, it'll determine what exactly you want to do with that. If there's a question of the classification that that would fall into, you'd want to submit uh, that in an email to classifications, and that's plural, classifications at cslb.ca.gov. Explain exactly what it is you're doing. They'll be able to tell you what exact classification that would fall under. Uh, once again, the trades that you performed working with pumps, uh, you'd need to spell that out specifically on your certification of work experience uh, in relation to the classification that you're applying for. Is it even necessary to add if I have over the four years of journeyman experience? I'm not certain if that's a continuation on a different question mark. Um, if you could clarify. So, so uh, as as we stated once uh, in the presentation about not trying to skimp by, um, if especially if you're sending in multiple certifications from different people, don't try to go with exactly four years of experience if you have more. Uh, because there's possibility that some of the experience may not fall within your uh, classification, and so they may not accept every certification that you send in if it doesn't meet the requirements. So more is always better, and once again, the more specific detail, the better, so they can make sure that they can apply what experience would would apply to your classification. Okay, do you have to have the same certifier for all four years experience? No, you do not. Uh, if you do have diff, uh, multiple certifiers, just be sure to fill that out on separate work experience or certifications of work experience. So each certifier would fill out a different one for the time frame and the trades they had witnessed. But no, one certifier does not have to cover all four years. How would you account for experience for the trade if it is a component of several trades performed? Um, well, uh, I mean, take for example, you could be trying to qualify for a an electrical classification, and that may have come from three different employers you worked at that did different things but also required electrical work. So uh, once again, the experience, the trades that they, your certifier puts down on there just need to be specific to the classification you're going for. You may have performed a lot of other trades. So in, in the course of that, you may have also done C7 work, uh, low voltage or other things, but when you're applying for a classification, we just want your certifier to put down the trades that directly relate to the classification you're applying for. How would you account for experience for the trade? Oh, wrong one. In order to certify your work history, the company you work for have to meet a certain requirement? Not necessarily. Um, while working for a licensed contractor could bode well in your position um there's a lot of classifications that don't generally have to have a licensed contractor um landscaping for one um uh painting um again you can work for someone who holds that class or someone who you could perform that work under however not necessarily do they have to be licensed or do they have to meet a certain requirement um, we're not totally looking at your employer yet what you've what you've performed uh, I've been employed 
for six years, multi-trade apartment maintaining 1099 also, uh, I guess the next part is part of it as well. How do I qualify? Different person. For, oh, that, uh, okay. So I've been employed for six years, multi-trade maintaining uh, 1099 uh, and then seems to drop off. I'm not sure what your, but I mean, it depends on the classification you're going for. Uh, and and once again, whatever that classification you're going for, 1099s, if you want to include those, that can show evidence that you were doing work for somebody. Uh, and if they're certifying you, what class or what class they held uh, can help uh, just clarify what experience you have gotten and verify from the trades that they put down. So once again, uh, specific on the trades. Uh, and then once again, it depends on the classification you're going for. How do I qualify or prove that for a B2? Um, as previously said, um, three unrelated trades um, were not your, it cannot be structural. Um, in addition, it can't be to install electrical, plumbing, or HVAC. Um, so again, if you have painting, drywall, and landscaping, those are three unrelated trades that your certifier would need to specify the experience that you have. Uh, how many credits, credit years to be given for structural engineering master? So once once again, uh, they're going to review educational credits on a case by case basis. Once they see your uh, application and the actual transcript that you've sent in. Uh, as you can see from our general thing, uh, construction management is the one that will get you the most. Uh, there are some engineering ones, specific engineering that directly relate to a A-class engineer that can possibly get you 36 months. But once again, they'll need to see your transcripts and the uh, classification that you're going for before they'll make a determination. Don't assume you're going to get the full credit uh, when you send it in. Make sure that you have practical experience as well, and you'll always need at least one year, no matter what your transcripts are. Uh, I, I've also, I also have worked with contractor six simulated years. Will this qualify? Uh, once again, possibly, I mean, obviously working for a contractor is an easy way to show the way that you could have gotten the experience for whatever class that contractor is licensed in. So once again, uh, listing those contractors and having someone certify your experience for the time frame and the trades that you've done, uh, that's an easy way for them to verify that if you are working for a B contractor and your certifier is listing B trades, it's uh, easily verified that you could have gotten that experience by working for that contractor. Um, just to reiterate that the experience is four years within the last 10 years. So if the experience is outside of the 10 year mark, then um, I wouldn't include it. Um, Unfortunately, we do have to look at the most recent. Um, I flipped my own property. Does that qualify as well? Um, Carmelo, uh, flipping your own properties, if you actually performed the duties, you would most likely um, submit an owner builder where you would have to submit your permits and whatnot showing the scope of work that was completed and what permits were pulled for. Um, it could qualify. However, again, all of that information would need to be submitted and it would be reviewed once we had that. Uh, continuation from the educational experience question regarding BAAA. So once again, uh, the 
it, it's not only the level of the degree, but it's what that degree is and related to the classification you're going for. So that's why we really can't do a pre uh, judgment of your educational experience and credit. Uh, you'll need to send your transcript in with your application. They will compare the degree that you have to the classification that you're going for and assign the amount of credit that you're going to get. That's why we stated in the, the workshop, don't assume you're going to get a certain amount and only send in the bare minimum of hands-on experience because you may not get quite as much credit towards education as you thought you might, and then you'll be short on the uh, experience. Okay, so for a C31 traffic control, can the experience be a combination of doing traffic control, setting it up, and also overseeing employees doing traffic control, and all of it under working as a tree service services contractor D49? So pretty much any contractor who needs to um, mark certain areas for traffic control um, would be acceptable a d49 if they're trimming trees in a place where cars are going to be going obviously you're going to have to mark off um the space where you know hey don't drive here um and a d49 could do that there's a lot of contractors who can do that um as far as setting it up and overseeing the other employees it would when you say overseeing employees it would have to be for the contractor that you're working for so it would have to be for a D49. Um, it wouldn't be like a self-employed um, situation. It would have to be overseeing people for the person that you're working for. Would there ever be a need to add owner builder experience on top of four years of journeyman professional experience? N no, I mean, it, it's always good to make sure you send in as much experience as you have. But if you have four years of journeyman level experience that can be verified by a certifier, uh, you, you do not need to submit owner builder. That is just an alternate method of showing some experience if, if you don't meet the required 48 months by working for a contractor or need additional experience. But doesn't matter where it comes from, four, 48 months is all that's required. How would you classify surface cleaning and what experience will be accepted? Um, so that would be one that we would need you to email our classifications um, email to give him a little bit more information. And then he can make the, the determination whether or not it fits within a category of one of our classifications or if it doesn't require licensing. So his email is classifications, plural with an S at the end, at cslb.ca.gov. And I would encourage you to reach out with as much information as you have. You might go back and forth with him. However, give him um, as much information as you possibly can and he'll make a determination for you. Uh, to obtain a landscaping licensing, would be the same steps. Yes, for all, all licensing classifications, same steps. You're gonna submit your application, uh, submit your application fee, as well as certifications of work experience, showing that you have four years or 48 months of experience in that uh, classification uh, within the last 10 years. Same, same process, no matter what classification you're going for. The only difference would be is the owner builder. Owner builder is specifically for the B classification only. So nobody else needs to submit that unless you're applying for the B class. Uh, what if you don't have any educational credits? Do I need credit for a B2 license? No, the educational credits is just an optional uh, way of getting credit towards the required four years or 48 months. Uh, but you don't need to have, there's no educational requirements to getting a contractor's license. You just need 48 months of experience within the last 10 years. 
And if you can gain some of those by education that you have had, then that that just makes it easier to meet that requirement. But education is not required to get your license. Would it be smart to start getting those proof documents in place prior to application submittal? Um, did you say 3% of all applications are randomly selected for these docs? So 3% of all applicants are randomly selected through a computer system um, for um, random investigation. Um, that is a requirement through our uh, through state law. Um, if you want a proof if, to submit the proof of your documents with your application submittal, that's the best way to go. If you, the more you send in for us to review, the better it's going to be for you. Um, as long as we have what we're looking for, um, and it's already in the record. If you were happen, if you did happen to be a three percent poll, then they already have pretty much what they're looking for. Uh, if I have an engineering undergrad degree plus an MBA business master's degree. And I get to three years worth of credit once, once again, uh, so having multiple degrees, uh, they don't stack educational experience. So if you have multiple degrees, they're going to take the degree that provides you the most educational credit, but it'll just be one of them. So depending on the classification you're going for, once again, once they physically get your transcripts with your application, they will see how that degree applies or degrees apply to your classification and they will uh, utilize the transcript of the one that provides you the most. So once again, we can't predetermine what that amount of education will be until you send in your application and they can compare the actual transcript they receive to your application. Um, strong way. Does the disclosure statement regarding criminal plea conviction separate doc need to be added to the application regardless of how far in the past a conviction happened? For example, if it's greater than 10 years. So AB 2138 was passed where that question is no longer on our application. However, once you do life scan or hard fingerprint, if you're out of state um, and the results come back from the DOJ or from the FBI and our criminal background unit needs additional information, they will ask you for that page. Um, I wouldn't submit it with your documents as it's not something that we're, we're to look for at this time. What is the contact email for classifications? So as you've written in there, it's classifications, plural. So classifications at cslb.ca.gov. We'll wait a little while longer here in case someone else has any questions. Or did we miss your question? Uh, I have 20 years as a general laborer under labor's union where where I got the forms for the application. Uh, would I get the forms for the application? So general labor doesn't count uh, towards experience. Uh, they're looking for people who are performing at a journeyman, foreman, supervisor, or contractor level. Uh, general labor is, is what it describes. You're just general labor. So, uh, obviously, if you've been doing it for 20 years, uh, I, I would think, uh, depending on the trade that you're performing, uh, you possibly could have 
journeyman level experience, but that would need to be specified. If you list your experience as a general laborer, that that is not considered journeyman level experience. So you would need someone to buy projects you had performed at a journeyman level as opposed to a general labor. How can you apply for a waiver? So waivers are if you have previously um, tested and passed the exam within five years um, or your qualifier holds the class already, um, has uh, passed the exams also, um, it's pretty much the application is identical to the original contractor's license application, except this one does say examination waiver 7065. Um, you would complete the application just normal, and um, you would not be required to submit the work experience. Um, what would happen is once the application was sent in um, upon review, they would look at the qualifier, they would pull up their information, see if they were, um, if they did meet the requirements of the waiver, they already held the classification, then they would determine if that was a waiver or not. Um, the on, on the waiver, there's uh, very specific uh, ways at which you can waiver the various exams. Uh, Dana explained uh, the general one for coming in as a new applicant, uh, and that basically boils down to, as she said, you've already passed the tests or have held that classification sometime in the past five years, then that is one way of wavering the exam. There are others if you're coming on as qualifiers on other people's licenses and you have been listed on that license as maybe an officer or something. Uh, the best advice is to go online to the uh, law book that we referenced earlier, which is available for free on the website and uh, look up the various forms of waivers that are listed on there and uh, then see if you meet those, any of those requirements. But they are very specific to how you can meet the requirements for a waiver, depending on one, again, the application you're sending in or the way you're coming in to qualify on another license. Thank you, Mark. <laughs> we appreciate that. Let's see. All right. Uh, CSOB. Uh, <laughs> that would be nice, but we do this just to help you. You know, our job here is to see that everybody who's out there that's qualified can get their license and hopefully make a great career out of this and do it the proper way so that they don't get in, in, in trouble operating in the shadows or illegally. And supervising count for the four years for the B2 license. Uh, so once again, supervising usually means you're working for a contractor. So if you were supervising uh, a contract, supervising for a contractor, and let's say that was a B general building contractor, very easily your experience would count because you probably were working on multiple projects with multiple trades involved uh, and if you are supervising the employees of that contractor, yes, your certifier can certify the trades that you are certifying for that contractor or the contractor themselves can certify you. And so, yes, potentially that experience can be done. Supervising licensed contractors, however, does not count as experience. So if you're just, uh, say, an apartment manager or something, and when things need to be done, you're hiring a licensed contractor and you're just overseeing that he completed the work, that doesn't count as experience towards that classification. Um, how would we go about adding a classification if I already have a D49 license? And how would I demonstrate the experience for the new classification? So if you already hold a class, um, you would use the application for an additional classification, application for additional classification, and it's pretty similar to the same thing. 
um, where it's first application, you know, you're applying for it, you're applying for it for this license number, and you have to demonstrate your work experience for the classification that you're applying for. You still have to have the 48 months or four years um, journey level um, at a minimum um, for that classification that you're applying for. How can I study for the test? Uh, online, as we mentioned, there are uh, uh, online uh, study guides that will give you a brief overview of the test and everything. Uh, there are also a number of books out there that will help prep you for uh, the examinations. There are references uh, in those study guides as to the reference books that they use to create the exams. But uh, other than that, it's uh, the law book will have a lot of the law portion of the exams and the other part is having knowledge of your trade to be able to answer the exams. Uh, one point I will make is there's a lot of schools out there that will profess to help you with the exam. Uh, just be aware that CSLB is not affiliated with any contractor school or prepping uh, organization. So uh, they do not have any advanced knowledge of the questions on the test or are in uh, cooperation with CSLB in any way. It's a service that they provide, but not related to the board. Um, in regard to the testing also, the tests are compiled from information from other licensees. So it's the questions are not made up by us, um, the people who work for the state. We actually have subject matter experts come in and they um, come together to make the questions, you know, that they're relevant to the classification that people are applying for. So it's not going to be something off the wall um, in your question questioning for your test. It'll be something that pertains directly to the classifications that you're applying for from your peers. Uh, what is the actual definition difference between the responsible employee and a responsible manager as the trade qualifier? I am not the owner nor member of the LLC. So specific to the LLC is where you have members and managers. So when a LLC is filed to register with Secretary of State, that LLC also needs to list the members and managers of that LLC, which must be on the, the license when they apply for a license. Uh, the qualifier can be any of a number of people on an LLC. It can be one of those members or managers that is listed and be the responsible managing member because that is their title. Uh, responsible managing employee just means that they are an employee of that LLC and they happen to have the qualifications to apply for the qualifier for the license. Doesn't mean that they're a shareholder in the LLC. They hold no percentage. They are just an employee that also has the qualifications to sit for the exams and be responsible for that classification on the LLC. So there can be, especially with an LLC, there can be responsible managing employees. There can be responsible managing officers, responsible managing members. They actually have quite a few titles that can be the responsible person for the classification on there. So for the most differentiation of those is just what title they actually hold within the company. And then the responsible part just means that they are the ones with the experience to sit for the exam and hold the classification. Is there a hold on issuing licenses at the moment? There is not. Um, as a matter of fact, most of the application units are pretty up to date on their processing times. Um, but yeah. yeah, there isn't. The one the one exception right now is we are partnering with a, a company to provide more flexibility in our testing. Uh, it's a company called PSI, and they're going to be doing uh, soon all of the CSOB's 
testing exams for us. So right now there is a transition uh, with them taking over the exams and us still doing some of the exams. So depending upon the location that you're in, uh, for example, in the Sacramento region, uh, we have filled up all of our testing slots for uh, June. Uh, and so it will be July, If even if your application is processed right now, it'll be July before we have the next openings with PSI to test. So not really on hold, uh, nothing is on hold. It's just that depending on the testing slots that are still available in certain locations while we're making that partnership with PSI to provide us more flexibility. They're actually going to be uh, able to provide uh, evening testing as well as weekend testing on Saturday, which will make the testing process much quicker and easier for people going through the process. Um, uh, I am the most senior level person of our installation. So uh, once again, uh, senior level is, is great as long as you are at journeyman level. Uh, if you're the senior person, you may be acting in a supervisory or uh, uh, foreman uh, capacity. Uh, both of those levels of performing work would be acceptable to put down and have somebody relate that experience. So uh, supervisors, foreman, uh, or just journeyman level, all can be used as experience towards your application. Uh, what is a passing score on the test? I, I believe, uh, but don't quote me on this, I believe it's <laughs> 60% on on the test is a passing score uh but uh that's something we're really not privy to <laughs> yeah uh, I, I i believe that was the last number i saw if you wanted to know specifically and we can provide that information uh just send a quick email to licensing at cslb.ca.gov uh but i do believe it's 60 percent yeah, we could check on that for you. Yeah. Uh, I have a Florida corporation doing business in California as an out of state corp. Can I qualify or do I need to apply for a DBA? Well, the DBA is a name specification. And, and if you're saying that you're doing business in California, you should already have a license. Uh, because even if you have a corporation somewhere else, if you're doing construction work over $500, uh, you would need to have a California uh, contractor's license. Now, your experience from out of state can be used for your experience. Once again, you're still just going to fill out a certification of work experience and have someone who has firsthand knowledge of the work that you performed in Florida or wherever, I believe it's Florida, or wherever your company does business uh, and evaluate that experience towards your classification that you're going for. So it doesn't matter where the uh, experience was gained as just to the level of the experience and the type of experience uh, in conjunction with the classification you're going for. But uh, if you're going to have a corporation in California, you would also need, even though you have a corporation in Florida, if you want that corporation to do business in California, you would once first need to register with the California Secretary of State to have a California corporation and then also submit for a contractor's license in California for that corporation to do business. Uh, the DBA would be reviewed or your business name would be reviewed um, up against the classification that you're applying for. And then we would have to, you know, if it wasn't, if it was Carmelo's painting incorporated, however, you were applying for the C27 uh, landscaping, we would ask for you to add a DBA to your name. But that would be um, 
reviewed and then the um, decision will be made after we had your application. Correct. Can a license fee be a qualifier for more than one entity? Uh, yes, there are very specific ways that they can, though. It involves ownership of the company or that the two companies you're qualifying have all the same uh, officers or members and managers. Uh, there is a provision in the law, uh, and you're going to <laughs> make my brain hurt there uh, because I can't think of it. it's uh, possibly 7065. Uh, or 7068, I'm not sure. If you send that question to licensing at cslb.ca.gov, we can give you the exact provision. But yes, you a qualifier can uh, qualify more than one license, but like I said, under specific uh, conditions. And it usually involves ownership or the structure of the two companies or uh, three companies involved. Three is the most that you can qualify, uh, but you can multiply multiple companies under uh, specific circumstances. Thank you. Welcome. We're here to hopefully answer any of the questions you have. Uh, I believe the trade qualifier can only be listed on one license unless they are an owner or member. Uh, when, once again, a uh, qualifier can qualify multiple licenses, but under specific ownership and member and manager and officer restrictions. So uh, once again, if you have questions about that or you're looking to uh, qualify multiple license, send that question to licensing at cslb.ca.gov and they can give you more specifics to the uh, provision of law that allows multiple qualifiers. What is the most efficient way to prepare for the general contractor exam? Do you recommend to take some training with a training institution or study all the code books. Uh, once again, we don't have any affiliation with any training or prep schools or organizations. Uh, they will promise a lot of things, but they are not connected to us in any way or have any advanced knowledge of the questions on that. Obviously, everything uh, any information that you have concerning your trade and classification uh, would be wise to study uh, code books, the law book, which is provided free online, uh, as we stated in our workshop, and the link is on the workshop if you download the workshop and go back through that. Uh, it's also on our website and fairly easy to find. Um, but uh, once again, that will also have references uh, on those study guides, which are provided on our website. We'll also have references to the books that were used to create the exam. So one, it's just a matter of knowing your trade. You can study those books that were used to create the exam. Uh, you can study the law book, which is provided on the website as well. All right. Anybody has an additional question? We'll wait for just a minute, and if not, Uh, will we receive reminders for any other upcoming workshops or do we need to just look on the website? Um, 
the the website is usually the best usually when they have new uh, workshops or anything a lot of times when they first devise them they'll be right at the top banner of the cslb website uh, we do this workshop every uh, first friday of every month uh, at the uh, middle of the month we do the same workshop again in spanish for anybody that would like the workshop in spanish and they are constantly adding new uh, helpful videos and workshops to the website all the time. So just refer back to the website. And uh, like I said, when it's new, they usually have it right at the top of the banner of any new workshops that have been created. Uh, you can also reach out to our social um, website or uh, social partners as well, uh, Facebook, uh, CSLB on Facebook, uh, and uh, ask any questions or uh, ask if there's any new workshops or videos being uploaded there as well. I'm applying for a Carpentry C6 license. I have three years experience as a lead carpenter with a fabricator building out trade shows, Four years building furniture with cabinet. These are all licensed as contractor. So if they don't have a contractor's license, it is okay to still put um, the business name of your employer in the one section and put an NA in the contractor's license number since they are not licensed. Correct. That that helps us. Uh, they will research through many different methods, whether just Googling the uh, employer's website uh, to see what they actually do, to see if the trades that were performed at, at that company, and if they need to reach out for additional information, uh, they can do that as well. Find the Spanish workshop on the YouTube channel? I believe so. Uh, our public affairs, I believe, records that version as well. And uh, once they do it each month, they put that one up on the, the website as well. So you should be able to uh, see on our YouTube channel, both the regular and the Spanish version should be up there in the archives. All right, if we don't have any other questions, we'll go ahead and wrap this up. As, as we said before, uh, this will be recorded and up on the YouTube channel that you can uh, see it. If you didn't get a chance to ask your question or if you came in late uh, and you're watching this on archive, uh, you can always send any questions you have about the licensing process to licensing at cslb.ca.gov and they will uh, help you with any licensing questions that you have through that as well. So that's all our time we have today for our workshop. Thank you for all your questions. If you have any other questions about your application, we encourage you to drop an email to our licensing division. Here's that email address, licensing at cslb.ca.gov. And that's licensing at cslb.ca.gov. Uh, if at some point you need to reschedule your exam, you can get that process started by dropping an email to exams at cslb.ca.gov. We've also put together a list of available resources for women considering a career in construction. If you haven't already, be sure to download this presentation to get them. We can download the presentation on a green banner. Uh, you can download the presentation on the green banner on the top of our homepage, CSLB, the www.cslb.ca.gov. If you're watching this archive video, 
of this workshop on your YouTube page. You'll find a link to the presentation down below. We welcome your comments or topics for future webcasts. Just drop us an email to social at cslb.ca.gov. Special thanks to our licensing division and public affairs office for their help on this workshop. The Get Licensed to Build workshop is a copyrighted production of the California Contractor State License Board. Thank you for watching.